Hi there. Um, I am just about to show you this piece. She's called Kissing Christ. I first made the ceramic for this piece, I think in 2009. And she's one of an additioned piece, so um, she can be reprodu reproduced up to 12 times in this case. And once that's done, this, this one is 9 of 12. Once we get up to the 12th one, then the mould gets destroyed so she can't be reproduced again. And this piece is in bronze. So the stages between my making, which was initially in clay, then it, um, I fired it in the kiln so it became ceramic. It went to Lou Grandi over at Creative Art Casting and she made a mould. And to make this bronze, um, uh, it would, it, the mould went to the foundry, Livingston's foundry, where they made a wax original, um, a wax positive, sorry, of this piece, um, which I went over and checked and um, they did beautiful waxes. And then they covered the wax in um, a plaster sort of ceramic shell. When that was dried, that went into the kiln, the wax flowed away, they poured in molten bronze, let that set and cool down, and then took off all the outside surface removed the interior and if you go and look um, at earlier videos you can actually see what this piece looked like it looked, I mean they always look very dry and rough when they're first cast and then um, Russell and Simon cleaned it up a hell of a lot over that and um, then Russell uh, did the patination afterwards and this patination is a verdigris which is a, like a blue green one of my favorites and I love it um, and that's a, a, a chemically, uh, it, it's a surface, it's a, it's a chemically created colour um, and it's applied with heat so that it's bonded to the surface. And this piece was based on a book that I was writing, I was writing a fictional work that never went anywhere, um, a long time ago and it was called Kissing Christ and it was based in Paris during 1917, so the First World War in Paris and the lives of the early Surrealists. Um, it had a loose association with them, really. But uh, Louis Breton, no, Louis Aragon, sorry, and Andre Breton were training to be psychiatric doctors at the Val de Grasse Hospital. And the First World War broke out, they became orderlies, they were, their training stopped, they became orderlies. And they lived in the hospital wards and collected photographic reproductions of Cubist works, which were very radical at the time. And this is taken from a Picasso seated nude um, poster that I know, well, a photographic reproduction I know they had. And this was also a bottle from a Brac that I know that they had. Um, the girl herself is wearing underwear from the period. Um, the uh, the, for instance stockings you, you had sort of thick wooden knitted stockings and sort of like thick rubber bands to hold them up that squeeze your legs and there was, there was no, nothing sexy like suspenders in those days um, Zeppelin because there were air raids in Paris um, the cross because there was a big resurgence I mean uh, it, Paris was predominantly Catholic anyway but um, there was a big resurgence in belief in both spiritualism and Christianity during the period um, because when people are at war um, they're fearful for their lives and they're fearful for their loved ones so um, they get more involved in religion so that's part of that um, and the, the thing about the surrealists is that they, they, they were predominantly men they were communist atheists and they believed that if you could seduce um, a good Catholic girl and somehow free her from her virginity and her religion, that you were doing her a good favour. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of guys like that around now. Anyway, so that's that. And she's just sort of a, a character from that period. I'll just show you around her. It was working on pieces like this that led to my later Objet Plaisir pieces. I hope you like it. Bye-bye.